Well, you know, I think um, looking back, that was during the 90s, from 90 to 2000, and, and we were really good at Meridian. We had some really good teams uh, there. We, we went to the World Series, I think, five out of those 10 years in Grand Junction. And, uh, you know, I just think that uh, coming from the mid, from my own personal experience, coming to the Midwest and into a state that was such, you know, so baseball rich. I mean, Coach Pope, you know, I'd had his playbook when I was a player in junior college. And, you know, coming to the state where, where he is and, and, and then, of course, uh, following the big three, you know, Hill and was here and, and uh, Coach Kessinger, Coach Harrison, before Coach Bianco was there. And, of course, then Mike got there and took it to a different level. But I think just, you know, my time at Meridian was a special time. We were on top of the junior college uh, as, as, you know, as that program that everybody was trying to chase. And, and I just think the things – in its own little way, there wasn't, you know, I always tell people, there really wasn't pressure at, at Meridian. I figured it out now, the only pressure was me, you know, putting it on ourselves or, or Coach Palmer putting it on him. But there wasn't the pressures, you know, obviously, as we move forward and when we get to the bigger programs and the bigger fan base. But in its own way, it did prepare me. It did, it did link me in with people who were very smart on baseball. And I tried to just do whatever I could to soak up every bit of what they do to try to help me. And of course, I owe a lot to Coach Palmer. I've never been under uh, a, a, a head coach that lets you work, you know, and was accountable and gave you responsibilities. And in all honesty, that's what I do. You know, uh, it's not about me here. Uh, my guys do a tremendous job. They have a lot of responsibility. They have a lot of accountability. They're going to be head coaches one day. And, and I feel like that that's what has helped me get to where I am, what Coach Palmer was able to, to give me, and I try to give the same to our staff. talk about us uh, if you're looking at the stat sheet you know probably the thing that you know stands out is offensively you know we've had another good year and uh, in Southern you know I think you know maybe their offense is underrated you know we've played them now twice and uh, really respect what they do offensively and probably much more well-rounded but because their pitching is so outstanding you know it gets all the publicity so I think it's a big challenge for our offense uh, you know people talked about us playing earlier in the year, but we played in midweek games. Uh, uh, those guys may end up uh, coming out of the bullpen, but you know the three arms that they'll start, we haven't seen. And, and, uh, and again, uh, very good, a team that uh, doesn't give up runs. It's going to be a huge challenge for our offense. Well, it's going to be a huge challenge for our, our pitching staff. I mean, I know their, their lineup is a very strong lineup. LSU's was a very strong lineup. It's tough to navigate to those hitters. I mean, uh, certainly we've played them two times now, and it'll be probably the same, pretty close to the same hitters that uh, that we saw outside of Graham. I, I don't think Graham played in the first game, uh, but he was back in that second game, and he made a difference. You know, he hit a home run in that game that really kind of turned that thing, I'm thinking about the, the second or third inning. But, uh, but you know, very, very – challenging for our, our pitching staff. As good as our numbers are, you know, still you're going to have to navigate through a very good lineup. And his pitching staff is pitching well, too. I mean, they're starting to really come on. And, and uh, you know, I know that was a big key of their success in, in this regional that they just got through. Uh, so, you know, I think both of us have our challenges in their, in their, in their own different way. Great. I know you guys don't have a lot of time to look at the fan experience on the game day. I'm wondering if the places, other places you've gone and seen, do you see places that have a similar outfield fan experience that we see in Mississippi? The Roost here, the outfield at Ole Miss, Starkville. Do you see those things in other places? And what kind of advantage can that be? We don't really see it outside of the state, in all honesty. In, in our conference that we just finished up with, I can't recall anything. Maybe uh, back in the old CUSA when East Carolina 
was in our conference and you know they they were named the jungle you know they would put some pressure on you out there uh, but but outside of that outside of uh, Ole Miss Stadium and, and, and then Starkville I don't really recall a whole lot uh, that we, we encounter with the uh, with fans out that direction yeah um, and I think it's becoming more and more popular I think people want to do it uh, I think because of what they see in Mississippi and uh, I agree with Scott I just watched you know Cliff you know on, on television at uh, East Carolina and what an atmosphere they had there and, and they had that outfield uh, fan experience as you as you call it you know uh, parish but uh, trying to recall I think Tennessee's built something out in left field over the years and obviously with their success the last few years that's becoming more popular but I think more more stadiums want to do that it's just how ours kind of happened I'm, I'm assuming it probably just happened here because of the just the topography of the ground right and, you know we're built in a little hole and there's there was a berm there and you can fit some students out there and it just kind of happened other stadiums were built and they didn't have that you know type of ground and you know so now they got to try to figure it out but alabama when they redid theirs they tried to build something out right field so i think people want to duplicate that it's just tough you look at arkansas uh you know that that wasn't there 20 years ago but that kind of emerged i, I don't want to say that they're copying any but i think that that's becoming a neat thing and i'm sure that's why your question but uh, it's 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 neat. I didn't even think about it, but all three of us do. Uh, you know, have you know some type of uh, outfield experience like that, and uh, pretty cool. Questions? Fred. Right next to Elko statue. Right next to that. That's it. Uh, well, I didn't hear that, but I appreciate it from Coach Barry. And yeah, you know, as as he said earlier, I think we both you know uh, respect the heck out of each other. We know how hard this job is. You know, we we, we realize that you know coaching at, at this level of college baseball, it's tough. You know, it's tough to win. It's tough to win year in and year out, and and he does it. And uh, and I think, you know, when you see them, you, you, you play them in the middle of the week, you can see how good their teams are. Uh, I think we've, we've seen each other for 20, as he said, 20, you know, 22 years. And, you know, uh, we've always respected the heck out of this program and, and know how good they are. One of the things I said earlier in the week, and, and, I, and I mean it as, as an up, uh, the utmost uh, as a compliment, is, you know, one of the things that I think will happen out of this weekend is, you know, we've always respected them. I think this state, I think this region, uh, but hosting this, you know, super regional here, I think will give the rest of the country, you know, uh, a, a view of how good Southern Miss baseball really is. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, we, we've been fortunate in Mississippi State, and a lot of that has to do with the, the conference that we play in uh and you know the publicity that you get from playing in the southeastern conference but baseball's different it's not like football where a team like this can they've been to Omaha and uh and so I think this gives them a uh, a stage uh to, to show the rest of the country how good good they are uh, we're we're hoping they're not going to show them how good they may, you know maybe they'll tone it down a notch but but I think that's what's really cool about this what everybody's so excited about that uh, I think you know not, we we've known how good Mississippi baseball is, but I think the rest of the country is going to get to see it this weekend. Like with the WJTV, how do you guys feel like the team last year when you guys played each other in the regional? How it's kind of adjusted to where you guys are now? Like how you, your teams have transformed and what you expected from each other's team? Well, we've we've each lost a few pieces from last year, but you know that was such a competitive uh, just. Really, really good baseball. Two two games that that we played. We ended, of course, they won and moved on and went to Arizona. But uh, you know, the Sunday night game was just it was just a great college baseball game. And then the Monday game started out obviously 
not the way we wanted. I think we're down eight, you know, and after the second inning. But then, you know, I think on, on speaking on our team, that's when I really felt like that our guys had had really made that jump in, in coming together and developing. And I knew we had a lot of those pieces back. And, you know, final score was 12 to nine. And, uh, and, and you know, really was another great game and went kind of down the wire, even though it was three runs, it's still, our guys didn't go away, you know, and, and even down that last inning, when we were down three runs, I was like, what they have shown me up to this point, I'm not gonna put, you know, I'm not gonna count them out with it. So, uh, you know, I just think, you know, on our, you know, with our team, you know, just that momentum, we've, we've taken that momentum from last year, how we ended there and just started into this year and have been real consistent with moving forward with it. Yeah, I, I, I've always thought, you know, um, you, you're different every year, even if you return players. The, the players are older, uh, they're hopefully better, um, but they're they're different. They, they mature, they have different goals, and they're at different stages of their lives. And so I think that's one of the unique things about coaching college sports is, you know, uh, Every team's different. Every you know, you lose a couple players, and it, it, it changes you know the team, the dynamic of the team. So, on the field and even in the locker room, I think we're a different team, you know, than we were last year. Obviously, we lost you know some some key pitchers from last year. And I think that's probably, if you just look at it as a whole, offensively, you know, a lot of those kids returned. Uh, as, as, as Scott said, you know, we, we've had a couple injuries that maybe slowed us a little bit offensively with, you know, Graham and some others, but uh, we've had a pretty good year offensively. We've just been inconsistent on the mound, and, you know, we started to figure that out a little bit at the end with, you know, Deluce and Elliott starting, uh, and, you know, with, with Mallets in the bullpen being more consistent for us, we've been able to define some roles. I think in the last three or four weeks, it's made us better. Uh, and so, you know, it's just taking us longer to figure it out, you know, uh, this year. But, uh, you know, we're a lot of the same names, but a different, but a different team. Okay, bye. Coach Bianco, we've got a lot of seniors that came back this year. You know, when you guys got into the tournament, got this chance, what have you noticed in the locker room that maybe changed over the past couple of weeks leading up, kind of getting, kind of getting new life? You know, uh, I don't know if this is exactly the answer to your question, but uh, w when we were there on that Monday Memorial Day, and you don't know if your name's going to get called, and uh, so uh, been 21, 21 of those times, you know, at, at Ole Miss, and 18, you know, of those times our names have been called, and uh, I don't ever remember seeing that type of reaction. And there's been times where we've been on the bubble uh, and got in. But uh, you could just see uh, the, the excitement, the true joy. And uh, you know, it would have been really, really disappointing to watch you know, Tim Elko and Justin Bench and Kevin Graham and a lot of guys that might be in their last year at Ole Miss. Not, you know, they, they've won as many games as anybody that's ever worn a uniform. We've played baseball for a long time at Ole Miss. And those guys have won as many games as anybody. You know, uh, over the last four years, and so uh, for them to miss out on this, you know, would have, you know, uh, would have been a travesty. So, just uh, excited, you know, for those guys, and, and I think they uh, they felt they did deserve it, but you don't know, you know, when you when you get to that point, uh, you just don't know. It's up to ten people in Indianapolis to decide if you if you get to play again or not. And uh, once they you know heard they could, uh, I, I know they were pretty excited. Questions. Anybody else? Questions? Is that it? Okay. Coaches, thank you very much. Coach Bianco, Coach Barry, thank you.